Solomon's Vegas Adventures. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Solomon's Vegas Adventures. Today we're going to go rock hounding for some trilobites out at Oak Springs in Lincoln County. So without further ado, let's go. So the Oak Springs trilobite area is an outcrop located right off Highway 93 in Lincoln County, about two hours north of Las Vegas. And geologically, the trilobites occur in this shale that dates back to the Cambrian 530 million years ago. It was a shallow marine environment, um, you know, way back then when this was all under the ocean. And it was brought up to the surface via basin and range tectonic extension, as always, which is, you know, pretty characteristic here in Nevada. So the types of uh, fossils that you can find here are trilobites, as well as like old plants and like worms. So that's basically the story of the Oak Springs trilobite area geologically. So what you'll mainly find out here are trilobite heads, mainly from the genus Olinellus. However, there are also Balbonella, oh God, I can't even say that. It's Balbonella, Balbonella, Balbolanellus. There we go. Jesus. Also Nephrolanellus. Oh my god, that's a tongue twister. Guys, paleontology is not my forte. Jeez. Nephrolanellus. There we go. I said it right. You guys are probably having a kick listening to me stumble over my words. I deliberately didn't edit that out for comedy. Anyways, those are the three main genera. I think that's the plural for genus of trilobite that you can find out at Oak Springs. My apologies for the lackadaisical paleontology description. Paleontology is not my forte, but you know, it's always cool to find fossils and it makes for a great adventure. So let's go. So as aforementioned, Oak Springs trilobite area is about two hours north of Vegas in Lincoln County. And to get there, it's kind of a pretty drive. So for starters, you're going to want to take I-15 North, get off at exit 64 for US-93, head north towards Ely. You're going to uh, drive through a pretty big industrial site. That's a new solar power plant uh, they're building out here. You're going to drop into the Coyote Springs Valley, and then you'll go towards Paranagant National Wildlife Refuge, which is really lush and beautiful. There's a few lakes there, and this is where we stop to take a detour there. So uh, here we go. All right, everybody, so we have made a pit stop en route to the trilobite area at a really gorgeous place called Paranagat National Wildlife Refuge. It's an amazing oasis north of Vegas, about an hour and a half outside of town, and I highly recommend it, so I'll give you guys a little tour of Paranagat while we're on our way to the Oak Springs trilobite area. So as you guys can see, these huge cottonwood trees are very numerous out here in Paranagat. You can hear the birds chirping, and that, it's not deceiving you guys, that is water. There is a lake here. This is a wildlife refuge with gorgeous wetlands, a nice lake, and it attracts birds from all over the world to uh, come eat and mate and stuff. Oh yeah, let's go check it out. So in we go. There's an animal right there. Look at these it's gorgeous cottonwood trees out here. Hear the birds chirping. Real nice desert oasis. So this is where it started to get uber windy, but this is just a view of that lake. This is actually Upper Paranagat Lake. There's a few lakes in Paranagat National Wildlife Refuge. We went to the upper one. It's our favorite one to go to. And an interesting thing is that on the other side of these mountains is Area 51. Ooh. So as I was saying, guys, it was uber windy, but I mean, wow, who knew you could surf in Nevada? This is just some footage of some waves from the wind in this Upper Paranagat Lake. So as I show you guys more Paranagat B-roll, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit more about Paranagat National Wildlife Refuge. So not only is it a rest stop for migratory birds migrating from the Arctic to the tropics and vice versa, such as this grebe right here, which is, uh, you know, breeding in the springtime, but it also hosts a plethora of rare local species, such as the bald eagle and the northern harrier. It also has lots of trees, lots of water, and overall, guys, it's just a gorgeous oasis here. It's kind of in the transition between the Mojave and the Great Basin deserts. But that's Paranagat, and there's a beetle. 
Well, that was Piranigate. Uh, we're now gonna go hunting for some trilobites at Oak Springs. Let's go. So past Piranigate, you'll go through the towns of Alamo and Ash Springs, and then you're gonna head east on US 93. Be on the lookout for really pretty things off the side of the windows, like these rocks. And then you're gonna go into the Parock Valley. Again, guys, if you look out the window, you'll see these gorgeous granite boulders just dotting the landscape. You'll then drop into the Delamar Valley, which is infamous because it's the site of the Delamar ghost town and abandoned mine, which, you know, produced a lot of gold. But sadly, it was nicknamed the Widowmaker because hundreds of miners died of silicosis. So they basically got quartz crystallized into their lungs. How's that for the magical healing powers of quartz, huh? Ugh. Anyways, you're going to go up this pass. That's the mountain where the Oak Springs Trilobite area is. You're going to want to keep going on US 93. Turn left here. There will be a sign. Follow the dirt road, and then you'll be there. Let's go. Of course it's windy. God damn it. So we are out here at the Oak Springs Trilobite area, and I am behind a tree because it's windy as hell and it's blocking the wind. Um, but anyways, we're about to go hunting for some trilobites. So, uh... Trilobites are fossils of these old arthropods related to horseshoe crabs. They went extinct about 250 million years ago, but the host rock here is limestone and shale from about 530 million years ago in the Cambrian, and there are a ton of trilobites out here. So they were preserved in the rock units. Um, as you guys can see, it's way out in the middle of nowhere, high in the mountains. Look at all these green juniper and pinon pine trees we're at about 6,000 feet in elevation so uh let's go find ourselves some trilobites we're gonna be right at the base of that mountain right there and uh if you guys look just gorgeous scenery out here indeed and look at that mountain way over there is mount irish 8,700 feet on the other side of that is area 51 so we're up here in lincoln county about two hours from vegas and uh we're gonna find ourselves some nice nice trilobites so let's do it and this my friends is the exact type of rock you would want to look for when you're looking for trilobites so uh this is all shale and shale preserves fossils extremely well especially trilobites so the trail leads you right to the fossil beds and the fossil beds are right up here so uh Let's go see what we can find. Now, I do want to note there are two types of fossils. There's trace fossils and there's actual fossils. Trace fossils are just like the imprints or like the chemical alteration that an organism would create. So like if you find an imprint of a trilobite but not an actual trilobite, that's considered a trace fossil. It's still a fossil. It's evidence that the organism existed and lived and died and was deposited there. And then there's actual fossils. So actual fossils would be if you actually found like a specimen of a trilobite. So you're only gonna find trace fossils here. 530 million years is far too long to preserve an actual fossil. And not only do you find trilobites out here, since this was a shallow marine environment, you can also find like traces of ancient like plants which is like this as well as like worms and other organisms it's just that trilobites are the marquee organism found here in these fossil beds so uh let's keep looking a lot of times you want to just go digging around in here see what you can unearth um here's an interesting little specimen right here it's not a trilobite but that red that you see that's that's a that's an old worm so uh like I said, you won't only find trilobites out here. It's just that trilobites are the marquee uh, fossil commodity out here, but nice little worm specimen here. So one thing I want to show you guys is that I've been pounding away right here for the last five-ish minutes. And as you can tell, shale breaks along planes of, uh, you know, weakness. They call that facility. Um, it's fissile, so it breaks along these lines. So I'm excited to... Uh, unearth this shale and uh, see if I can find anything in it that I've been pounding away at. Here's a real nice specimen. Half the head of a trilobite. Pretty cool. That's a huge lizard right there. Oh my god. Hello. What is that, a horned lizard? Oh jeez. That's huge. Hello. 
Thanks for uh, letting me film ya. Whoa. What's up, dude? Wow. All right. Catch you later. Get that specimen right there. Lots of uh, worms in this one. Worms. Mm -hmm. Real beautiful country out here, guys. Well, as you guys can see, the shale beds are vast out here, but we've barely found any trilobites. You know, I only found one. Okay, well, I wasn't so lucky in finding trilobites. La Madre and El Padre were very lucky finding trilobites. So that's why teamwork is so paramount. That specimen has a lot of really nice trilobite heads, as does that one. I mean, look at that. That's, that's gorgeous. That one has like the ribbed like outline of like trilobite body. Um, over here, oh my head's in the way. That's a real nice trilobite head too, as well as a small one. Uh, they even found a rock that looks like a shovel. Um, so that's a keeper. Uh, there's a nice worm, more trilobite head right there. Lots of worms right there. This specimen is filled with trilobite heads as you guys can probably hopefully see um worm there there's like old ferns and aquatic plant fossils there small trilobite head in that one more worms over here and more worms and stuff over here and then if you look over here these are all really nice specimens of uh those ferns and aquatic plants that have been uh deposited in the shale so a shallow marine environment is the depositional environment and while i was not lucky in finding many trilobites my parents were, so teamwork makes the dream work. Shale, yeah. Nothing like a delicious lunch after collecting some trilobites and other fossils. Oh yeah, that's a really delicious snack, by the way. I highly recommend it. And you can see those cumulus clouds towards the east. You know, it's May already, and uh, the monsoon season starts in uh, June. Well, late June. So uh, these types of clouds often turn into thunderstorms during the monsoon summer seasons, but they're probably just gonna stay cumulus for today because it's May. Oh yay. All cumulus here, no cumulonimbus. So even though we have a lot of specimens to analyze, one thing that's important here is to take as little as you possibly can, only as much as you anticipate keeping. So we're probably going to keep maybe like five or 10% of these specimens. It's important that you preserve the space for other people and take as little as you possibly can, even though you're allowed to take specimens here, just be considerate and uh, keep this place protected and preserved for the next generation so that the next generation of children can have fun looking for trilobites too. Furthermore, instead of just leaving these on the table, we're actually gonna hike them back to the shale beds just so uh, other people can have fun trying to uh, find some of these trilobites and uh, other fossils. They're over there sorting through all the loot. We're only gonna keep some and save the rest for the land out here. All right, guys, so I'm gonna put these specimens, pretty much 90% of the specimens we collected back here in the field. And one thing that is really important is that you don't just throw them around. You gotta like place them back because you don't wanna break them or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to meticulously place these down here sporadically in the uh, bedding. So, yeah. Boy, I was wrong. I said all cumulus, no cumulonimbus. Well, it looks like those cumulus clouds are entering the towering cumulus phase, and some of them look like they might develop into thunderstorms. This early in the season? Interesting. Hi, Ryan. How you doing over there? And boys over there, uh, in them pickup trucks, they're, they're driving around black side of the corner, they're going a little too dumb. What? I think that we just found the Oak Springs creature. Well, my friends, that was the Oak Springs Trilobite area, as well as the Paranagant National Wildlife Refuge. Um, I highly recommend taking a trip out here. It's about only two hours to this place and an hour and a half to Paranagant. Paranagant is a great place to stop en route to this place. 
And this is a good place to stop if you're making a trip up to Great Basin National Park, Caliente, Cathedral Gorge, or any of the other northeastern Nevada adventures. So yeah. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Vegas Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, peace!